Well, it's a joy to be with you again today. We are on a campaign this week, and the expression here behind me, it says, take a hit, but never quit. And we've been focusing so far in this week's programming on, on Paul's words when he says, I fought the good fight. I, I, I finished my course, and I kept the faith with all the things that came against him. And, and we can relate to that today. There's quite a bit coming against us in, just in our society today. And many things would want to kind of knock you down and take you out of the race. But uh, um, there is a strength inside of you. And we really have been stirring this up uh, to, to keep going because he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. And God puts something in you, the power of the faith, uh, not, not just you trying to have faith, but the faith of Christ. And so it's been great. We want to hear from you, your prayer requests, uh, praise reports. If God has touched you, we sure want to know. We are encouraged by that. If you want to order our magazine, I hope you're receiving that. Uh, and we have just released an issue here that's not even on the screen, but you will see that in programs to come. And, and, and we want you to have it. It's, it has a beautiful full-color magazine with uh, reports, teachings, testimonies, news updates. And, uh, you know, people don't get a lot of magazines coming into their homes today because everything is digital. So I thought, well, maybe everything is digital. But, you know, on the digital part, you can just go delete and bip, it's gone. But when you get something as nice as this coming into your home, you know, you and, and you look at all the different articles and the reports, you want to lie, have it lying around. You want your kids and your grandkids to see it. They, they'll see images they don't see in the daily newspaper. So order that. You can use the text phone or you can call there the uh, Grace uh, Prayer Center, which is uh, uh, call or order online, or you can just text your request. But make sure you include your address and we'll send it to you. And it's just free to be a blessing to you, to encourage you. Well, uh, Dean Morris and Nathan Thurber are with me here today. How's it going, Dean? Good to be with you. You have been with me several times. And uh, Nathan, you were with me here on the first program in this series, and you set us off. I still remember what you talked about four days ago now. Uh, endurance, to endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We know that God wouldn't ask us to do that unless he gave us the strength for that. So I'm going to ask you, I have a teaching today. I'm going to take it a little further, but I want to hear you give a good exhortation. Just turn into that camera and, and go away with it. Well, thank you, Pastor Peter. And you know, just before we came to air, uh, I was talk talking to a pastor. Uh, of course, we are pastors, but I was talking to another pastor and he said many of his people are getting very discouraged during this pandemic and this lockdown, even some leaving their faith. Maybe we're talking to you today. So we hope to encourage you. And I thought of the scripture in the book of Hebrews that says, you know, it is referring to in Hebrews 12, referring to discouragements that we might face. And it says, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, uh, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race that God has given to each of us. We each have been given a race. How? Fixing our eyes on Jesus Christ. I think there's a message in there, fixing our eyes on Christ. But, you know, some of the things that hinder us are, you know, it mentions sin, but also that hindrances are just other stuff, disappointments. And people might disappoint you. Maybe you've been disappointed by people in recent days. Uh, loss, we, we lose loved ones, we lose a job, we lose things, and you know, they, they, they can cause us to quit, give up on our faith, give up on Christ, or uh, rejections. People might, it could be people rejecting you, and maybe that's how you feel today. I think the message of the Scriptures is not unsympathetic. So the Scriptures say that Jesus was tested and tried in every way like us so He can sympathize with us, but He also comes to give us strength. And so the, the message is, yeah, hold on and, and be determined and be tenacious and all that good stuff, but we find our strength to do that by having our eyes fixed on Jesus because in Him we find a strength. In Him we find uh, 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 the courage to go on. Paul even said in Galatians, don't go weary in well-doing. In other words, He's acknowledging there will be times we do grow weary. Maybe you feel weary today, but he says, don't grow weary because uh, there's opportunity. In due season, you'll reap. In other words, uh, opportunity will come. God, God says, I'll make all things new. And so you know, I think uh, Winston Churchill, and I'm, not, I'm more into quoting Jesus than Winston Churchill, but he said, if you're in hell, just keep on going through hell. In other words, hell will come to an end and there's opportunity on the other side. I hope that's the message that's being articulated to you today. Pastor Peter's going to share in, in a moment, so I'm going to pass it over to him. But know that today 
our message is keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. No matter the disappointment, the rejection, the failures, whatever, even, even if it's your own disappointment, keep our, let's keep our eyes on Jesus. He strengthens us, Christ in you. And if you don't know Christ, we'll give you that opportunity today. But Jesus in you, he gives you the strength to go on when all hell is breaking loose. I believe Christ in you is raise, rising up even in these moments we have right now. Pastor Peter? You, you know, when you're talking like that, it makes me think that if a person is in a situation that seems so menacing, so difficult, you feel in that moment like it's never going to end. Absolutely. You're stuck in this. And, and, and just even though, and I know you quote Jesus more than Winston Churchill. I can vouch <laughs> for that, by the way. You know, but I'm glad you explained that so that nobody would misinterpret that. But, but you just keep going through it to the other yeah. side. And, um, you know, the Bible is full of examples of people. In fact, to be a Bible hero, I suppose you had to face some, some discouraging circumstances. And aren't those our greatest victories? Isn't that true? I'm thinking of you here now, Dean. You were so discouraged. I remember when you were going to do your first campaign, and you were so discouraged because you didn't have all the money. And, and I was challenging you to believe God for some of the money yourself and World Impact Ministries, our partners. Of course, we were, probably wouldn't have left you sinking, but I wanted you to believe God yourself. And then you just a few days to go, you were in Indonesia. I still remember you came so concerned to me. You had that concerned Dean Morris look. And you know, how are we going to get through this? But you did get through, didn't you? Yeah, I remember that because uh, I came to you saying, you know, I think we have to go down to two days instead of three. We just don't have the money for it. Yeah. And, you know, we had a conversation and then it turns out that, you know, we, we walked through it and uh, God provided all the money. That's right. And I remember I got up and <laughs> took you and said, you believe God. You're not gonna, it's true. Not that I would want to wrestle with you. You look a little too big for that. And, but, but, but I kind of wanted to impart to you, we're going to get through this. Oh, thank God. Now, if you have a prayer request, you have a need, you get on the phone and call us right now. And we want to share with you. I'm going to do a little short teaching and then we're going to go back to our panel and we're going to share with you a video clip. We can get that in as well. I, I want you to hear this. I believe the Holy Spirit is ministering to you today. Yesterday on the program in the teaching, I was talking about the contrast between condemnation and confidence, that the two cannot coexist. And so this is very much integrated with the concept of endurance and tenacity. First John chapter 3, and I, I read this, but I'm going to read it again. If our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. So you see here, you have confidence and you have condemnation, and the two cannot coexist. And confidence comes when we are sure our hearts before God. Well, what is confidence? Well, I always like to put the Greek word in there, meaning we have studied maybe the etymology of the, of the word used in the Bible. It's parousia, which is also translated boldness. To be bold is to be confident. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a force. It's like a solid foundation. It's an, it's an assurance inside. You're not just begging for God to do something, but you have an assurance that God is with you. I would say confidence is like an inner quiet strength. It says in Isaiah 30, 15, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. So when I say strength, when I say confidence and boldness, I don't mean a belligerent, loud, condescending kind of a assurance. It's not an assurance that depends on the mood or the noise or the or a pep talk that you need to kind of stir you up. No, it's an inner confidence. Look at how John wrote about it in 1 John chapter 5. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us, confidence. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we asked of him. You see, he says, when you know I'm praying along the line of something that Jesus Christ has already provided. He's already done it. So when I pray in line with that, naturally I have confidence. I'm not wondering, does God want to do this? Or is God interested in this? If Christ has provided it, I pray with confidence. You see, this, this boldness, it will help you to stand in tough times. Let's talk some more about what confidence does. And it, it does just that. It, it keeps us standing in tough times. Look at what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians. He said, even after we had suffered before and we were spitefully treated, 
we were confident in our God to speak to you the gospel in much conflict. He said, we were in much conflict. It was a mess. Maybe you feel like it's like that for you. And he said, we have much confidence in spite of the mess. You know, Paul had been in trouble in a city called Philippi. And then he went to Thessalonica and he got into more problem. He had opposition from a religious kind of envious mob that attacked him and the people that, that supported him. The whole city was in uproar. There was a fellow called Jason and Paul was staying at Jason's house and they dragged Jason out on the street, took him to court. It, it was a mess. Pressure was on. But in all of that, Paul says, no matter how tough it was, uh, we, we kept standing because we had an inner confidence. You know, uh, Proverbs 3.26 says, the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. You know, when your foot is caught in something, you trip, you fall, maybe you're, you, you know, get caught. I remember one time I was in, in preaching in, in Fort Worth, Texas, and, and, you know, being a little Canadian, maybe a little, was a little pride, I don't know, uh, but um, they, had a, they had a skating arena there in the mall. And, you know, I, I skate. I played hockey growing up. I haven't done as much now for the last few years. But, you know, I felt confidence. I can outskate any of these Texans. And, uh, and so I put on my skates. I've even looked at the blades. Didn't realize I had figure skating blades. You know, that's a whole different thing than, 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 than hockey skates. And so I charged all in the ice like a good Canadian. Well, Swedish born, but Canadian. You would have been proud of me, Nathan, there, you know. And it didn't take long. My foot got caught. And, it tripped. I, and I was charging so hard that it really, they, they took me out of there in a wheelchair. And I had to preach uh, that's that, in that church, it was something else. You see, your foot gets caught. And, and here it says, will help you spiritually, not if you're trying to do something dumb on skates, but spiritually is confidence in God will actually keep you standing. That's what, you, you know the story in the Bible about the three Hebrew children? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, that they, they had confidence. They said, even if we don't get delivered, we are not going to bow to this idol. We are not going to do it because we have confidence in our God. It, let me give you more. Confidence sustains us to the end. Hebrews 3, 6 says, Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence. See, that's what I'm talking about. Take a hit, never quit. Hold fast to confidence. And, and, the, and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. Verse 14 says, we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. So you may start the journey very confident. You know, Tyna addressed this, I think it was on our program yesterday or the day before, how, how in the waiting time, between the beginning of something, we may be very enthusiastic, very confident in the beginning, and then it tends to wear away. It could be because of discouragement from friends, from family, from people who are not friends. Maybe you read something. But he says, hold fast. That means keep your eyes on Christ all the whole journey through. And, and, and what does confidence do? It brings great reward. Hebrews 10, 35, do not cast away your confidence. That means you can throw it away. You can say, ah, I'm going to stop believing. I'm going to stop trusting. Don't cast, cast it away because it has great reward. For you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. That has, that's God's will for you today. Mm. I, I can sense that I'm speaking to somebody. You've been believing God. Maybe it's for your family. Maybe it's for a friend. And you almost feel like I'm going to quit because you say it doesn't look good. But God's will is that you will receive the promise. Not just that, that you kind of believe it, but you receive the fulfillment of that promise. And confidence when the hits are coming are so important. How do we develop confidence? Well, I give you two words. I could do a more thorough Bible study on it, but just two words. The first word is abide. 1 John 2, a lot from John's writing today, abide in him that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed. I think of the apostles there in their record in Acts chapter 4, you know, when they were, they were thrown in jail, they were threatened, 
And, and they felt like, remember the word confidence and boldness is really the same root word in the Greek language. They felt like they had lost boldness. And they said, God, give us boldness. We feel so discouraged. We feel so overwhelmed. And he says, the Holy Spirit uh, fell on them in that place. And they were filled with boldness. And, and so abide, abide in him. Keep seeing yourself surrounded in Christ. Like we talked about here this week. You know, you're dressed in the spiritual armor. Christ is your helmet of salvation. Christ is your righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness. Christ is your prince of peace, the gospel of peace. Christ is the truth, the belt of truth. Christ is the author and finisher of faith, the shield of faith, and so on and so forth. Abide in him. And the second word is attach. You know, there's a prophet in the Old Testament. His name was Habakkuk. And it literally means one who attaches himself, one who clings. And, and, and so Habakkuk, this prophet, maybe he, he's not one of the big ones, but, but it's worth reading. And uh, for us, the story of Habakkuk means cling to what Christ has done. Hold on to you. You know, in, in the time that this prophet Habakkuk lived, it was a very uncertain time. There was change and upheaval. Uh, the province of Judea was in the death throes, if you wish, uh, uh, of being taken captives uh, into Babylon. And I want to read to you what Habakkuk prophesied. And I want to prophesy that to you today. He said in chapter 3, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines. In other words, it doesn't look very good. Though the labor of the olives may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills. So he's saying, it seems like everything is falling apart. We worked and nothing came of it. But he says, I'm not going to stop rejoicing in the God of my salvation. He is my strength. And, and he says, I can see the day coming when I'm going to be jumping and leaping like a deer on the field uh, rejoicing. And that's a prophetic word for you today. Uh, maybe you say, it seems like the things I expected, the things that were uh, are falling apart, you know, some people trusted in various sayings. I just came across some preachers that people esteemed very high. They said this and this and this is going to happen. They prophesied God saying it, and, and none of it happened. 2020 has been a year like no other. But you know something? No matter what, if you've been disappointed with people, with yourself, with failures, you will never disappoint in God. He will bring it to pass. Oh, this is wonderful. In a moment, I'm going to ask my friends here, uh, Dean and Nathan, to, to uh, chime in on this. We're going to do some more. But what, what do you feel that the, I feel like the Lord is speaking to people that are facing troubles right now, Nathan? I'm going to give it to you for a moment. And you, you just speak whatever's in your heart to people. You mentioned boldness. And yes, you took it from Acts. And, 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 and maybe we can gloss over that thinking, well, they were preachers, and most, of, most I assume, watching at home are not preachers, and most people aren't. And so we can almost gloss over it. But I, I kind of see uh, the necessity of boldness in each of our individual lives. Not that we're going to stand up like Peter on the day of Pentecost and, and mm -hmm. preach, but I, I see almost a resolute nature or attitude in our makeup to trust the promise in the midst of difficulties, almost like a horse, you know, with the, you know, when a horse is racing, they have these, they put these blinders on. I'm not, I'm not a huge horse fanatic, but I've seen them. They put on these blinders, I guess they're called, but you, you almost like a tunnel vision. Tunnel vision can be a negative, but I think there can be a great positive in that. Uh, I heard, you know, full of quotes today, I guess, but I heard one quote that said, you know, you can't, you'll never get to the end of your journey if you stop and throw rocks at every dog that barks at you. In other words, <laughs> yeah, every critic right. and every yeah. disappointment and, you know, there's, there's a lot that comes at every, you, there's a lot probably coming at you today. Uh, you know, boldness, I think, and it's a, they kept praying for that again and again in Acts. They kept 
it's like a resolute a attitude. I don't think it even means volume. I mean, you mentioned one of a preacher you esteemed, T.L. Osborne, but and I wasn't around. I would, it never heard him that much. But you mentioned he never raised his voice that much. But you noted his boldness, mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. the volume, but just that his attitude of trusting what he said to be so. I think every whether you're retired in a senior's home or watching single mother or wherever your situation is, not necessarily a preacher, a boldness. And and God invites us to ask us for the, ask him for that mm -hmm. boldness. But I kind of say like those blinders, you know, don't get off track. Just keep going forward, and, and we will get to the finish line. You will get to the finish line. Amen. I think that's a, that's a tremendous uh, illustration you're given there with the blinders on the horse, you know, and neither you and I go, I don't remember if you, Dean, if you go to the horse racing track. <laughs> I, I, I've never been to one. I, you know, I've seen it on television, but, uh, but, but there's something about staying focused. It says about Jesus, he, 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 he set his sight to go where he was going. He, he, he wasn't going to be deterred. And uh, you, you want uh, So funny. I, uh, I'll be quick. You, when I started working for you 21 years ago, you would tell me, and I was younger then than I am now, and, and you, I was obviously unfocused because you'd tell me endlessly, focus, Nathan. I mean, you, you, you know, sometimes forcefully, focus, Nathan. I was so determined that I'd learn how to focus. I made it, it, computers were just coming out at that time. I made it my password, focus. I, you know, anyhow, it was a great attribute that well, I think hopefully I've learned a little bit of focus. Now you, you're one of the most focused persons, so I can say, well, if if I had any small, tiny part in encouraging focus, sorry, a little I humor. Feel, I, I hope feel that rewarded. Is. I feel rewarded because you're one of the most focused people I know, Nathan. You really are. But let let, we, let let's stay on with you right now because we're here on television for you. We can we can reminisce about things uh, otherwise. But right now, if you felt like giving up, we want to pray with you right now in the name of Jesus. Don't give up. The promise is going to come into fulfillment. That which you had hoped and anticipated. Rest in Christ. Focus on Him. Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Just like in that story in the book of Acts. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke God's Word with boldness. I thank you for the Holy Spirit just being so beautiful and so powerful, present with people watching right now. Amen and amen. I want to say as well that if you don't know Christ. That, that's, that's big. It, it, for what we talk about here may seem strange or weird to you. We think these are weird people. What are they talking about resting in Christ? And what, what in the world are they talking about? Well, once you're born of the Spirit, new realities open up to you. And so you can call that number on your screen. Someone will pray with you. Or just text me and I'll send you the material. I think it's coming up on the screen there that we've given out to millions of people around the world. We'll just help you to get started a little bit. We'd we'll love to send it to you. And, and so uh, sometimes I think when we're talking here, we're talking about resting in Christ. We're using certain terminology, but you know, that's okay. Because if you study uh, computers, you need certain terminology, right? I never knew what a mouse was. You know, the mouse is the little thing that, that guides the icon on the computer. I thought a mouse was something, you, you know, anyhow, never mind. Uh, so we have some expressions, rest in Christ. When you get into this Christ life, you'll know what we're talking about. It'll become a powerful expression to you. But right now, I want to just spend a couple of minutes on this. This is so important. The Christian life is not selfish. It's not just about me, God bless me, God bless mine. It's about the world. And I've been saying this week, you may see us as a TV ministry here preaching and sharing, but that is just a minute part of what this ministry is about. We're about the world, especially about those who have never heard the gospel. Please watch this. In World Impact Ministries, VIP stands for Visionaries in Partnership, believers who advance the gospel together, and it just takes a dollar a day, $30 a month. Gospel campaigns reach millions who have never heard the name of Jesus. More than 17 million have received follow-up for new believers. Seminars train thousands of pastors to reach their own country. Social media and gospel television touches people around the world. The two-year curriculum in World Impact Bible Institute campuses in Kenya, Tanzania, Myanmar, and Indonesia prepare students to be gospel workers. The VIP family honors Christ. The VIP family honors the immense value of every individual, regardless of culture or religion. Give a dollar a day for the gospel. That's less than a cup of coffee or a small chocolate bar. A dollar a day, $30 per month, makes a huge difference. 
Others can give $42 or $84 a month or whatever they purpose in their heart. VIP partners receive a striking gold-colored cross and globe pin. Peter Youngren's book, The Faith That Works, a quarterly gospel investment update, an exclusive quarterly teaching to empower spiritual growth. To join the VIP family, participate in monthly automated giving through your bank account or your credit card. Go online now at give.peteryoungren.org or call 416-745-1820. Don't delay. You are needed. When it comes to the gospel, we do like Paul. We do what can be done. There's no sense in, in, in weeping over what cannot be done right now because of political restrictions, but it's about going forward where it's possible. So during the lockdown, we can't rent stadiums right now. We, we have launched this outreach to language groups. Usually we think in terms of nations. Now we're not thinking so much in terms of nations during this time, we're thinking language groups. We say, what are the language groups where there are many people who have never heard of Christ. Well, one of the obvious ones, and one of the first ones that we really did get big thrust in is the Hindi-speaking world. We just completed this a few weeks ago. I think we have it, if you get ready in the control room there. Look at this. We reached to date, and there's still being new people reached, maybe a 1,000 a day more, uh, but 17,186,755. And then 757,862 watched an entire campaign rally. I mean, this is historical. That first number of over 17 million, that means that they saw something. Maybe they watched five minutes. Maybe they saw a testimony of someone who had received Christ. Maybe they saw a testimony of someone who had received healing. But to me, as much as that is an impressive number, over 17 million, that we reached through social media outreach, uh, is that over three quarter of a million people, 757,000, we get exact numbers, and I'm sure they have changed since you printed that screen, Dean, there, because you know, it, it, every, it comes in more every day, right? It's right. gonna be there, and on YouTube, it will be there for years to come. Watched from beginning to end. They heard the opening welcome, and they heard the closing finish for the day. They heard the sermon, full gospel sermon, uh, about, you know, changing their mind, coming to Christ, and, 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 and you're a part of it. So we need your help right now. We are so grateful if you would help us to do this to more language groups. I see I ran out of time, I lost time, uh, but, but thank you for responding. You see on the screen how you can participate. Thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A2W1, or P.O. Box 433, Winchester, Kentucky, 40392-9800. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.